Now, the suburban executions in hitmen terrorise in quiet neighbourhoods. It's Australia's new gangland war. The body count is rising, we can see it. They are the hateful eight. Eight marked men gunned down on public streets since last year, including a mafioso kingpin who used up his nine lives. They were targeted assassinations. As the hit men become the hit list in a deadly real life drama with a script inked in enemy blood. We have high profile personalities, gangsters, it's got everything there. Tonight, the contract killings that cost less than the security cameras they're caught on. You have a number of people out there ready to take a contract for as little as $1,000. A criminal lawyer's exclusive insight into a cast of villains and former clients either buried or under investigation. They need to protect themselves and they feel that the only way has been with um, um, a firearm. And how revenge is fueling a vicious gangland war with no truce in sight. These organised criminals um, have access to firearms. They don't always shoot straight. He fancied flash cars, liked luxury yachts, wore expensive watches and name-dropped secret angels. The sordid criminal dealings of mafia playboy Pasquale Barbaro we laid bare the instant he was gunned down on a Sydney suburban street last week, just metres from the front door of a controversial construction heavyweight, George Ellis. It's my understanding that he's been cleared as a suspect and it's just very unfortunate this had occurred outside his home. Criminal lawyer Lupka Subeska knew Pasquale Barbaro, but she was much tighter with the man he was visiting the night he died. Miss Subeska acted for George Alex, who was visited by Barbaro several times in the hours leading up to his execution. I understand that they were associates of some sort, but it must be a very sad circumstance for him and his entire family to have to have dealt with that that night. It's not the first time George Alex has had to deal with the death of a close associate. This is the moment George Alex's business partner, Joe Antoon, was murdered in front of his young daughters. The Brazen Act caught on Antoon's own security camera. Antoon was also represented by criminal lawyer Lupa Sebeski. Joe had enough enemies to fill a football field, but it's my understanding that um, Pasquale Barbaro had enough to fill Madison Square Gardens. Pasquale Barbaro and Joe Antoon were once business partners, but their relationship soured over an outstanding debt. A court heard Barbaro planned to kill Antoon, but couldn't go through with it. He was somewhat of a um, coward when it came to one-on-one. -on -one. Former Assistant Police Commissioner Clive Small is best known for locking up Ivan Milat. But unlike that calculated killer, Small's investigation into Pasquale Barbaro revealed a cocky young man whose arrogance saw him clash with the Calabrian Mafia bosses. He was using his Mafia connections as a sort of a wall and part of his uh, demonstration of, I have these connections, you can't hurt me, uh, it didn't work in the end. While gunshots across Western and Southwestern Sydney are almost commonplace these days, it was the execution of the high-profile Barbaro that triggered a declaration of war by police to end the gangland killings. Now, in a dramatic flexing of its muscle, the top brass here have deployed a special strike force to investigate eight murders stretching back to last winter. Rebels bikey mates Mark Easter and Michael Davey were the first to be taken out of the frame. Adrian Buxton and Mehmet Yilmaz also sunk. The connections become clearer as household names of the criminal underworld start to be chalked up on the kill board. Safwan Shabaji, slain outside a smash repair shop run by the infamous hitman Walid Ahmed. Ahmed was then snookered in broad daylight outside a Bankstown cafe. The main suspect in that shooting was Hamid Assad, who was potted in a driveway last month. A suspect would soon emerge, a cocky Italian with mafia blood. His name, Pasquale Barbaro. But less than a month later, as if right on cue, 
This prize eight ball was dropped by an unknown player. We're seeing a period at the moment of very high murder activity. Sunday Telegraph investigative journalist Yoni Bashan says this gangland killing spree is unlike anything he's ever covered before. We're seeing a number of murders involving victims all hitting the deck, so to speak, and the reasons behind it are not so clear. Drugs and guns were Barbaro's bread and butter. So too parties on luxury boats where he spruiked star-studded guest lists. He name-dropped Miranda Kerr in an elaborate attempt to forge a business relationship with an alleged Middle Eastern crime chapter boss, Farhad Kwame, on a luxury launch chartered for two and a half grand an hour. It was a no-show from an unwitting Kerr, and it had a bloody ending. The two men were shot at from shore. Kwame copped a bullet in the shoulder. His host, Barbaro, escaped uninjured. He hung around with some very, very serious Middle Eastern gangland identities and as a result he was falling out with a lot of rival Middle Eastern organised crime families and that may be one of the reasons why he is no longer alive. The calls from his um, enemies were louder than, the, than his support team of, of recent times. At the time of Barbaro's death, he was the subject of a prohibited arms order by police. This meant he could be searched for weapons anywhere and at any time. And while Pasquale knew he couldn't carry a gun, so did his enemies, and that left him ripe for the picking. Not being able to carry one, not that I'm condoning carrying a firearm, that's, it shouldn't be the case, but they are unable to protect themselves. They are sitting ducks. There are less guns on the street, but there are more bodies on the road, in my opinion. It's forced the so-called sitting ducks of the underworld to travel with close allies with clean records for protection. They're known as bagmen, an underworld secret service carrying weapons their bosses can't. Where do you think Barbaro's bagman was on the night he was murdered? I'm unsure. It's bizarre that he didn't have one on the night. Barbaro could no longer trust or afford to pay anyone to watch his back. He was also concealing a million dollar debt. Sources have also told us that rival gangs are taking credit for the hit. And it's very difficult for police then to, to do their job because they're hearing all the rumours and they're, they're listening to some, some telephone intercepts where various people are, are saying it was them. You know, it's quite obvious that there are people out there that do know what happened. Uh, we'd be asking those people to come forward. Assistant Police Commissioner Mark Jenkins heads the new strike force and won't have a bar of criminals whinging about losing their protection. Somebody not carrying a firearm in the community is a good thing. If people aren't carrying firearms because of firearms prohibition orders, I'm all for it. And if you have a look, Clive Small doubts um, the execution orders the, came from within the mafia crime family. Violence. The way it was carried out suggests to me it was um, a local crime gang. And when I say local, I'm including outlaw motorcycle gangs, uh, Middle Eastern crime gangs and local gangs. The current affair has also learned at least one infamous crime family, sworn enemies of Barbaro, is celebrating his grisly demise. But as the gangsters of Sydney turn to ghosts, their memories fuel a deadly game of revenge that haunts police. If you're going to involve yourself in organised crime, you're either going to end up in jail or you're going to end up dead. And a reminder from New South Wales Police, anybody with information about these murders can be provided anonymity and protection.